that will allow us to start creating our longitudinal section or the profile of the existing road at the location of the proposed alignment. To do that, first of all, let's just hide all these labels. We don't need them for our coming work on the profile. So I'll just uh, select the labels and type hide. That will just keep them at the background. We don't need them at the stage. Okay, hide objects. We got our alignments. We have our surface that will allow us straight away to create a profile. So we can just go to the profile, create a surface profile. The first thing we'll ask, where do you want the location of that profile? Uh, obviously at the location of the alignment one, what we just created. What surface we're using is the existing surface. So I'll select the EG and press add. And we go straight to draw profile, uh, draw in profile view. That will give us the options for the actual profile view. So we've got the alignment one and the profile, let's call it profile one. Make it easier. Description, we don't need to add anything for the profile. We'll keep all these settings as per um, Civil 3D. And we'll go next, next all the way. We've got a few options here that we may change down the track. We can go back always and change them from our profile views properties. We don't need to do any changes for those at this stage here. So we'll, we'll continue all the way to the end and we'll go okay so this will be showing just the elevation and the stations at the bottom which is in other words our changes so i will go okay are we going to show any cut and fill we don't have the proposed profile yet to make cut and fill hatching so we'll just go ahead and create profile view we'll ask where do you want to place that profile view just click anywhere on the screen that will give us our existing ground that is showing the profile of the existing ground at the location of our alignment. As I just said, uh, all this information we had to choose while we're drawing the profile view. We can change those easily afterward if we uh, desire. It's just simply by clicking on the profile view on the hatched area and we can just go profile view properties. That will give us all this information about the hatching, the bands for the data at the bottom of the profile, all the profiles included the elevation. So all the information that we had to choose from, we can change them at a, a later stage. Uh, I believe the profile view here is showing one to 10 exaggeration. So if I need to change that to one to five, just to make it a bit more realistic so we can look at the design while we're working on. So I can just select the profile view and go to the second option, edit profile view style. So we've got at the start here, the graph, it's exaggeration one to 10. So if I choose one to five and apply, okay, that will give us our profile in an exaggeration um, format of one to five. So. I'm looking now at each one of these squares. It's always handy to understand what space we're working with. So each one of those, I've got 58 for this line here and 60 there. So each one of those is a meter increment. So each one of the horizontal lines increasing by one meter. It's important to understand that. If I look at the um, changes at the bottom, I've got from zero to 20 meters. That gave us one, two, three, four, vertical spaces that means we've got each one of these spaces is five meters it's just handy to understand what spacing we're working with and that works identical with the exaggeration rate so that means each one square one meter high and five meters long in reality so since we created our vertical profile for the existing ground at the location of the alignment our next step to go and start designing our road profile so in other words to draw the proposed longitudinal section of our road or the longitudinal section of our proposed road in other words to do that simply we can just go to profile and profile creation tool this time rather than creating a surface profile the second option profile creation tool will ask what profile view you want to work with we'll choose this profile view and this time we'll call it proposed profile so we can differentiate between the existing ground and the proposed road. So proposed profile one. 
and this is a design profile and it will show all the label set so I understand what information will be shown there as we agreed during the alignment we can choose to tick the criteria based design we prefer not to it, that will limit our work as long as we are familiar with our road we know what values we're choosing we should be fine we don't need to let server 3d dictate our design so we know the k values on our road for the 60 kilometers per hour if we choose a k value of 10 or 12 that should cover all the cases for a sag or a crest curve so that's all what we need for our design therefore there's no need to tick the criteria based design if you don't have this information you don't know where to get it from you can take that and allow silver 3d to choose the appropriate k value for your design so i'll go back to uh, our option we we'll keep it at general here and we go okay very similar menu to what we had on the alignment drawing on the first on the left hand side the first icon will give us the options to draw the profile in tangents only or tangents with curves and we will give us the curve settings so first of all let's choose our curve settings and we control our k value to be minimum of 10 in both cases for the sag and for the crest curves you will see when we do the design i'm certain that our k values would be way higher than that but this is just our minimum we specify there so we don't go below that values so we'll go back to the second option drawing tangents with curves we start it's very important to snap to the starting point and our starting point here is the crown point of the existing road so it's very important it's, it, this will form a control point for our design let's look at the control points that we have to obey while we're doing this proposed profile mainly we have the existing road at the start and the existing road at the end we need to start and finish by these two points because these are the two crown points if you remember during what we've done with uh, the surface creation we mark these two points as the crown points of the existing road so we have to make sure that our profile will finish to these two points that's first second we have our lowest point here showing the valley area on the surface so if i look at my surface we have the this is the lowest point here where the valley is it's a good idea to stay at least two meters above that point to allow for drainage arrangement for the pipes to allow the water to pass under the road from one side to the other so mainly these are the main control points for our case in this design so i need to start from this point here shift and right click that will give me the or snap for the end point i'll choose that snap to the start of the existing surface from here i'm just looking at our profile as we agreed the minimum change in profile we can design it better because that will allow a smoother easier road to drive on rather than uh, lots of curves that will hide the cars on the other side so we won't be able to see it as a driver so i'll look at a, a a profile to go all the way here from one point to another assuming that this area here will be filled from what we cut from the area there and this is the purpose for design when we get to the end of this design we'll calculate exactly our cut and fill areas to make them balanced between the cut and fill locations along the road at this stage what we're doing is a preliminary design so we're not doing the final design i'm just drawing a preliminary profile for our proposed road we will have the option to add extra uh, intersection points vertical intersection points on our profile in other words we will have the option down the track to change from adding these points here we can change the shape of our profile if we need to and we can uh, change the height of these intersection points the locations and everything but until we get there and we have all the tools for calculating the cuts and fill and we start visualizing our roads it's easier for now just to choose a straight road going all the way maintaining about two meters above the 
um, valley area around here and going back and snapping to the end of the existing surface which is in other words that's the crown point of the second existing road so I'll just shift right click end point and I'll choose that point there if I press enter that will complete the design of our proposed profile so let's look at our profile currently showing starting from here with a grade of negative 1.16 higher than the uh, minimum grade which is great that's what we're after i'm looking at the k value for the curve this is the starting point and the end point of the vertical curve the length of the curve is about 55 meters we've got a k value of 10 and we have all the details for the stationing and the elevation of the lowest point and the vertical intersection point with the start of the curve and the end of the curve i'm just looking at the curve we can make it a bit smoother rather than we maintain all the curve just within that limited area we can just spread the curve and make it a bit wider all these grips i've got here to control the curve i can make the curve a bit wider i can move the curve sidewise which is horizontally by maintaining the same grade on the tangent end to the curve i will call it by just clicking on this triangle here or this error that will allow me to move the curve forward by maintaining this grade here the value of 1.16 so if i move it there that maintain this grade and just move the curve horizontally and the same thing goes for the second uh, error on the opposite side that will make it move to the uh, other direction by maintaining this grade there i will undo all of those i was happy with what we created so currently we have 1.16 negative grade to the um, curve and then we have a 4.41 for exiting the curve we are assuming all of this area will be under fill and the area will be under fill this area will be under cut and the area will be under cut looking at this roughly it seems to be that the amount of cuts and fill are not balanced i've got more cut comparing to the fill areas but as we will see down the track, this is not an accurate representation of the current cut and fill on the um, road because this is just looking at the road as a one line for the center line. So this is the profile here is looking just at the road here as one center line. When we create our cross section, that will provide a width for our profile and then will allow us to create a corridor. This corridor at some areas will be under cut for example on this high side of the road on the other areas could be fill so I, currently this representation of the road is not accurately displayed so what we need to wait until we get all the components of the road then we can start making changes for our profile to come up with a good balanced cut and fill areas in other words what we're currently doing is just modeling what we are proposing and the design stage will start at the end by the time we will get all the components shown for the cross section the profile the corridor and all the components working together before i close the menu as we've seen on our uh, horizontal alignment we have the same panorama uh, menu which is for the profile grid view showing us our profile in a table view that will allow us to make some changes for the grades in and out and for the vertical curve we can change the length of the curve the k value the radius and all of those components if we need to from this table in a numerical values rather than just graphical changes what we've done here on the grid points so that will be enough for now for drawing the vertical profile of the road our next step will be creating the cross section assembly which will allow us to start designing our corridor which is the assembly of all the three components together the horizontal alignment the vertical profile and the cross section assembly